Nathostomiasis also known as larva migrans profundus is the human infection caused by the nematode roundworm Nathostoma spinugerum and or Nathostoma hispidum which infects vertebrates. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Symptoms. A few days after ingestion epigastric pain, fever, vomiting, and loss of appetite resulting from migration of larva through intestinal wall to the abdominal cavity will appear in the patient. Migration in the subcutaneous tissues under the skin causes intermittent, migratory, painful, pruritic swellings cutaneous larva migrans. Patches of edema appear after the above symptoms clear and are usually found on the abdomen. These lesions vary in size and can be accompanied by pruritus, rash, and stabbing pain. Swellings may last for one to four weeks in a given area and then reappear in a different location. Migration to other tissues visceral larva migrans, can result in cough, hematuria, ocular eye involvement, meningitis, encephalitis and eosinophilia. Eosinophilic myeloencephalitis may also result from invasion of the central nervous system by the larva. Causes Human nathostomiasis is infection by the migrating third-stage larva of any of five species of nathostoma, which is type of worm more specifically a type of nematode. The most common cause in Asia is G. spinugerum, and the most common cause in the Americas is G. binucleatum. Three other species, G. hispidium, G. doloresi, and G. nipponicum are found only in Japan. There is one unconfirmed report of G. malaysiae causing disease in humans. Transmission Nathostomiasis is transmitted by the ingestion of raw, insufficiently cooked definitive hosts such as fresh water fish, poultry, or frogs. In Thailand and Vietnam, the most common cause appears to be consumption of undercooked Asian swamp eels Monopterus albus, also called Fluta alba which transmit G. spinugerum. Monopterus albus is an invasive species in North America, but no nathostoma has yet been identified in the U.S. <laughs> Host Intermediate host The primary intermediate host is the minute crustaceans of the genus Cyclops. These crustaceans are then ingested by a second intermediate host, such as frogs. Definitive host The definitive hosts for nathostomiasis include cats, dogs, tigers, leopards, lions, mink, opossums, raccoons, poultry, frogs, freshwater fish, snakes or birds. Vector There is no vector for the parasite nathostomiasis. Incubation period The incubation period for nathostomiasis is three to four weeks when the larvae begin to migrate through the subcutaneous tissue of the body. Morphology The adult parasite is reddish-brown in color and has a globular cephalic dome that is separated from the rest of the body by constriction. The posterior portion of the nematode is smooth while the anterior half is covered with fine leaf-like spines. The head is round and contains four to eight transverse rows of hooklets that are protected by a pair of fleshy lips. The males are shorter than the females, 11 to 25 mm (0.43 to 0.98 in) compared to 25 to 54 mm (0.98 to 2.13 in), respectively. Eggs are oval and have a mucoid plug at one end. Topic: <laughs> Life cycle. Topic. Life cycle in definitive hosts 
Adult worms are found in a tumor located in the gastric wall of the definitive hosts and release eggs into the host's digestive tract. The eggs are then released with feces and in about a week hatch in water to develop into first stage larvae. Larvae are then ingested by minute copods of the genus Cyclops. Once entering the copod, the larvae penetrate the gastric wall of their intermediate host and begin to develop into second stage and even early third stage larvae. The copods are then ingested by a second intermediate host such as fish, frogs, or snakes. Within this second intermediate or definitive host the larvae repeat a similar pattern of penetrating the gastric wall, but then continue to migrate to muscular tissue and develop into advanced third stage larvae. These larvae then insist within the musculature of the new host. If the cyst containing flesh of these hosts is ingested by a definitive host, such as dogs, and cats, the cysts are ingested and the larvae escape the cysts and penetrate the gastric wall. These released larvae travel to the connective tissue and muscle as observed before and after four weeks they return to the gastric wall as adults. Here they form a tumor and continue to mature into adults for the next six to eight months. Worms mate and females begin to excrete fertilized eggs with feces 8 to 12 months after ingestion of cysts. They are passed out in the feces and eaten by another fish. Life cycle in humans Infection of humans by nathostomiasis is accidental because humans are not one of the definitive hosts of the parasite and do not allow the parasite to complete its life cycle. Infection in humans follows ingestion of raw, insufficiently cooked infected intermediate hosts. The ingested third stage larva migrates from the gastric wall and its migration results in the symptoms associated with infection by nathostomiasis. The third stage larvae don't return to the gastric wall preventing it from maturing into adult worms, leaving the life cycle incomplete. Instead the larvae continue to migrate unpredictably unable to develop into adults, so eggs are seldom found in diagnostic tests. This also means the number of worms present in humans is a reflection of the number of third stage larvae ingested. Diagnosis. <inaudible> 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 Diagnosis of nathostomiasis is possible with microscopy after removal of the worm. The primary form of diagnosis of nathostomiasis is the identification of larvae in the tissue. Serological testing such as enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or the western blot are also reliable but may not be easily accessible in endemic areas. CT scanning or MRI can be used to help identify a soft tissue worm and when looking at CNS disease it can be used to reveal the presence of the worm. The presence of hemorrhagic tracts on gradient echo T2 weighted MRI is characteristic and possibly diagnostic. Urinalysis can also be used to identify the presence of hematuria or the worm, but it is not a very reliable diagnostic tool. Prevention The best strategies for preventing accidental infection of humans is to educate those living in endemic areas to only consume fully cooked meat. The inability of the parasite to complete its life cycle within humans means that transmission can easily be contained by adequate preparation of meat from intermediate hosts. This is especially useful because of the difficulty and lack of feasibility inherent in eliminating all intermediate hosts of nathostomiasis. So instead, individuals in endemic areas should avoid eating raw and undercooked meat in endemic areas, but this may be difficult in these areas. This is due to preference for dishes containing raw fish in these endemic areas. The dish ceviche is native to Peru and a favorite of Mexico. It consists of onion, cubed fish, lime or lemon juice and Andean spices including salt and chili. The ingredients are mixed together and they are allowed to marinate several hours before being served at room temperature. Then in endemic areas in Southeast Asia there are traditional dishes associated with these areas that also include raw uncooked fish, such as koipla in Thailand, goica song in Vietnam, sashimi and sushi in Japan. Acknowledging these cultural traditions, individuals in these cultural can be educated on methods of adapting their food preparation activities in order to remove the larva without greatly altering these traditional dishes. For instance, meat should be marinated in vinegar for 6 hours or in soy sauce for 12 hours in order to successfully kill the larva. 
In areas with reliable electricity, meat can be frozen at 20 degrees Celsius for 3 to 5 days to achieve the same results of killing the larva present. Treatment Surgical removal or treatment with albendazole or ivermectin is recommended. The most prescribed treatment for nathostomiasis is surgical removal of the larva but this is only effective when the worms are located in an accessible location. In addition to surgical excision, albendazole and ivermectin have been noted in their ability to eliminate the parasite. Albendazole is recommended to be administered at 400 mg daily for 21 days as an adjunct to surgical excision, while ivermectin is better tolerated as a single dose. Ivermectin can also serve as a replacement for those that can't handle albendazole 200 ug per kilogram p. o. as a single dose. However, ivermectin has been shown to be less effective than albendazole. Epidemiology Endemic areas include Asia, Mexico, India and parts of South Africa. Originally believed to be confined to Asia, in the 1970s nathostomiasis was discovered in Mexico, and found in Australia in 2011. Even though it is endemic in areas of Southeast Asia and Latin America, it is an uncommon disease. However, researchers have noticed recently an increase in incidence. This disease is most common in both Thailand and Japan, but in Thailand it is responsible for most of the observed parasitic CNS infection. It has long been recognized in China, but reports have only recently appeared in the English literature. History The first case of nathostoma was identified by Sir Richard Owen when inspecting the stomach of a young tiger that had died at London Zoo from a ruptured aorta. However it was not until 1889 that the first human case was described by Levison when he found the nathostoma larva in an infested Thai woman. This delay in identification of the parasite in humans is due to the fact that humans are not a definitive host for this parasite-making infection from this parasite rare. Nathostomiasis infection is rare because the parasite must be digested when it has reached its third larva stage, providing only a short time frame in which the parasite is capable of infecting humans. It is uncommon for the larva to penetrate the skin of individuals exposed to contaminated food or water without ingestion. See also List of parasites human List of migrating cutaneous conditions <laughs>